What is up guys, New Limits here and today I am bringing you the build I have been using on the Demon Hunter for Torment 16 Rifts and Bounties. This is one of the fastest farming builds in the game, if not the fastest. Maybe the monkey's faster, but still, it's really fast. You're going to fly through rifts, fly through bounties, and you will get an insane amount of gold for gem ups. Overall, absolutely an amazing build. Like the video if you guys agree, and let's get right into it. For the skills, we are using Shadow Power, Shadow Glide, gain 30% increased movement speed while Shadow Power is active. We're using Smokescreen Displacement, gain 100% movement speed while invisible. We're using Preparation Focused Mind, gain 45 discipline over 15 seconds. This is gonna help uh, make sure that we are able to spam these ones out. So you wanna use your Shadow Power, but only use it once every 5 seconds. So it's gonna last for 5 seconds. Do not spam it, because you can actually spam it. You can keep on clicking it, but you don't want to do that. Just wait till it's 5 seconds, and if it's not active anymore, then click it again. Really important, because when you're doing your speedruns in the rifts or in the bounties, uh, sometimes you get some really happy fingers and you're clicking on it too many times, so you definitely want to try to uh, not do that. Also, smoke screen just the same. You're going to click it, you're going to move like super duper fast. And this is just going to help us replenish that. We're using Hungering Arrow as our main damage so source, we're using the Cold Rune. Each consecutive pierce increases the damage of the arrow by 70%, so this is just a really nice uh, extra amount of damage. We're using a Vengeance Dark Heart. Now, we aren't really gonna be dying very often because you are using the Gold Wrap, which is gonna give us armor when we pick up gold. The gold is coming from the Boon of the Hoarder, so we're picking up the gold, we get more tanky. And if you combine this with the cube, with the Everest band, each time you pick up gold, decrease your gold and pick up radius. Means everything on your screen is gonna get sucked into you and you will get all the gold and you will actually not be able to die. The only moment that you can die is when you just start out in a rift or when you're doing bounties. So if you just click on your vengeance and you uh, apply it and you activate it, then you're actually not gonna die instantly, you can get your first gold and that's the way you're gonna start it. So you definitely wanna make sure that you are able to keep this up, definitely at the start. And you also gain 40% damage, so you definitely want this to be active all the time. We are using the Dawn in the cube, reduce the cooldown of Vengeance by 65%. With the Dawn, you only need 38.70% cooldown reduction to have permanent uptime on your Vengeance. So that is what you're looking for, 38.70% cooldown reduction. We're using Strafe Drifting Shadows. It's just gonna give us 100% of normal movement speed. So this is also really nice, just a little bit extra movement speed. For the passives, we are using Tactical Advantage. Whenever you use Vault, Shadow Power or Smoke Screen or Backflip with Evasive Fire, you gain 60% movement speed for two seconds. We are using Smoke Screen and we are using Shadow Power. So we gain a lot of extra movement speed. Hot Pursuit, increase movement speed by 20% for 4 seconds when you hit an enemy. If you are doing bounties and you have to go kill a boss, that is the only time when you actually might die and when you start off a rift. What you could do is just go for awareness to make sure that you don't die when you're doing a boss because you're not picking up any gold. But other than that, I would definitely go for a Hot Pursuit. What you could also consider instead of Hot Pursuit is Perfectionist. If you're having issues with your discipline, if you can't keep it up all the time, then you uh, might want to go for Perfectionist because you uh, reduces the discipline cost of all skills by 10%, which could be really nice if you're spamming these ones out. Just gonna help you out just a little bit with the resource cost reduction. We're using Blood Vengeance. Your maximum hatred is increased by 25. We don't really care about the hatred because it is gonna be the maximum pretty much all the time, but, but we care about the other part. Gain 30 hatred and 3 discipline when you are healed by a health cloak. So it's definitely the 3 discipline with the health globe. That is the key part here. Otherwise you will run out of discipline, but with the blood vengeance, if you go from elite to elite, and that is basically what you want to do, you would want to go to an elite, you want to kill him, you will get globes, and then you just want to move as fast as you can with your smoke screen, with your shadow power, and you're just going to use that to move as quickly as you can to another elite pack. It's going to give you health globes again, it's going to replenish your discipline, and that's basically what you're just going to keep on doing every time. And if you manage this correctly, and you only use this every 5 seconds, and you click your smoke screen every single time it's up, your discipline should be fine. Now, I also make some mistakes sometimes of pressing um, the shadow power a little bit too often, so that is definitely something that you want to make sure you keep that in mind. But your discipline shouldn't really be much of an issue if you do it correctly. And we're using Ambush, 
just for that 40% additional damage to enemies above 75%. We're basically one-shotting everything, so this buff is just always up and you just gain 40% extra damage, which is just really, really nice. In the cube, we're using the Dawn, we already explained that. We are using Hunter's Wrath, your pr primary skills attack 30% faster and deal 200% increased damage, so a flat out 200% increased damage. What you want to make sure, if you click on the Rift, so I'm just gonna show you really quickly, if you click on the Rift and you start off, what you can do is just use your Hungering Arrow a little bit until you have the 20% momentum stacks, and that's the moment that you go into the Rift and you start strafing around. So it's just to start the Rift initially really well. We're using the Everest Band, which makes us just incredibly tanky because of the um, Gold Trap and the Boon of the Hoarder. And we're using Depth Diggers, primary skills that generate resources, deal 100% in additional damage. So again, just a really nice multiplier again. What you could also go for if you feel like you really have the damage and you, you're not really looking for more damage, you can go for Warzikian's Arm Guards. Every time you destroy a wreckable object, you gain a short burst of speed. So if you feel like you have no enough damage, you can definitely put this one in and you're gonna go even faster. But I just like to one-shot everything or just make sure everything gets one-shot. So I'm using the Depth Diggers here, but it's an option. You could also go for Echoing Fury if you want. That is definitely also an option, so that's also really nice. You could go for Envious Blade, gain 100% critical hit chance against enemies at full health. So you're definitely one-shotting everything. You definitely have some options here, so um, this is pretty, pretty open. So I always leave a link in the description below for a D3 planner. This is the exact build that I am using here, but there you can actually check what stats you want and what gear piece and what the best one is. You can also still check the skills and the passives and the cube. I also make some uh, changes here and there if I get some feedback from people that think certain things might be a little bit better. So I definitely always update it as well. So if you want the most updated one, then definitely click on the description below. I might change something or at the very least you can see what uh, stat priorities for what uh, piece there is. For the legendary gems, I am using Taeguk. It just creates a lot of damage and when we're using Strafe, it's just constantly picking up. You constantly have 10 stacks, so you have like an extra 60% damage. So this, this is just really nice. We are using the Simplicity Strength, increase the damage of primary skills by 79.50% which is also just really nice, it's a straight up multiplier again, and we're using Boon of the Hoarder. If you want, you could also swap the Taeguk out for a Molten's Wildebeest Gizzard, because we are using the Squirt's Necklace. We don't really take any damage, but sometimes the stacks can actually fall off, because you're not, your health is not dropping, but you're still taking damage. So the, the Squirt's Necklace is not always up permanently, if you want to have permanent uptime on your Squirt Snickless, you can put in a Molten's Wildebeest Gizzard. It is gonna create some more damage. But the stacks are generally always up. And even if you have like four or five stacks, it is actually more worth it to have just the Taeguk than have the Molten Wildebeest Gizzard. But that is up to you if you would like that. What you could also do is change the Taeguk for the Wreath of Lightning. And this is gonna give you 25% increased movement speed. So this is also a really nice one. I just wanted to have a really nice balance between having the damage to one-shot everything and still having the speed. With, of course, the um, with the Boon of the Hoarder, we get movement speed. With the smoke screen, with the Shadow Power, with our passives. So we already have a lot of movement speed. So I've tried to find a, re a really nice balance there. But if you want, of course, you can definitely go for the Wreath of Lightning. We are using the Yang's Recurve. Just because it gives you reduced all resource costs, and this is really nice because otherwise your dis discipline is just gonna run out way too fast. And with the Yang's Recurve Bow, this always just rolls instantly with resource cost reduction, and this just really helps you out with the discipline. You definitely want as much discipline as you can on the secondary roll as well, so you want plus 12 if possible. For our quiver, we are using the 9th CD Satchel, I believe that's how I should pronounce it. Hungering Arrow is guaranteed to pierce and also deals 579% increased damage, which is also really, really nice. It's a nice damage multiplier again. Uh, here you also want to have plus 12 discipline on it. We are using the Nemesis Bracer, so Shrines and Pylons will spawn an enemy champion. Really nice to help us with the discipline as well for the health globes. And of course, you know, you're gonna clear it faster, it's just really, really helpful. We're using Focus and Restraint. 
Again, for the stat priorities, just click the link in the description. But we are trying to look for as much damage as we can. So you want area damage, critical hit chance, critical damage. That's basically the, the gist of it. And of course, you want to have that cooldown reduction 38.70 to have permanent uptime on your vengeance. That's really important. Other than that, I think I basically uh, covered everything. So yeah, guys. That was basically it. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that like button. And I will see you guys in the next one.